Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. The earth is a closed system. The earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. 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 <laughs> the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. We had a time before when we were doing uh, like on, uh, on, on Sabbath school, when we were doing a, uh, like our, in, 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 the, in the classes, we were learning about the creation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I noticed that there was a confusion that was taking place in the midst of the students, in the midst of the people. Because when we began to do the study, we were going, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And on the first day, he said this, he did that. And the second day, this and that. And then... It was like the sun and the moon came like later after creation had already begun. Mm -hmm. And then there was just some things that were taking place that we were confused about. And then the main thing that I saw, which caused a lot of people that actually was uh, a heated debate or discussion, was the firmament. Mm -hmm. That was the one that struck mm -hmm. me. And I was trying to wrap my head up around it. And I was thinking, you know what? Maybe the firmament is somewhere out there. We just don't know where it is. Only God knows. And you know, I even began to question. I began to say, you know what? Maybe the firmament isn't really what the Bible was. It seemed like the Bible was describing. Maybe there's something else. Mm -hmm. And it all had to do with the, with the globe that we've been, we've been told. Mm -hmm. So um, again, so we're gonna, I want to start by sharing with you this verse, this famous verse from the book of Genesis. And I encourage you to open your Bibles with, with us as well and uh, join us in this. Again, we are learning together. You and us, we are learning together on, about the true biblical teaching of what the firmament is. So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. Listen to these words. It says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. That's verse 6. And then verse 7 says, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, And we were, clearly, we're clearly seeing something that there's water and the firmament, whatever we're going to be getting into uh, you know, in this show, it's dividing waters from the water. So yes. there's water above this firmament, uh -huh. there's waters below. Yeah. That's what the Bible yeah. says, it, right? That's what it says. If the Bible says that, we're going to have to ultimately... We're, this is, and I believe the Bible is 110% on spot with this. Mm -hmm. We, sure, we have not... We, we, I don't think we will ever have the technology to ever even be able to measure the earth. We will never be able to go high enough to be able to see everything because we are under the firmament. Mm -hmm. And because we are under the firmament, we cannot be able to know what's fully out there until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And that's why when I, when I, ask the, when I look at this thing, then you have to think about this. The Bible says that there was once water. Mm -hmm. from, from this, there was once water. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, if we go back, it says, um, in the beginning, and that's Genesis 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The face of the deep. And then it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, yeah. of the waters. waters yeah, yeah. Right? That's so right. then there was, right. there was water there, the great deep. Um, it's basically like an abyss, but full of water. It's just basically an, a void that's just full of water. Mm -hmm. And so the firmament is there and all life on earth is contained within that firmament. That is basically our shield. That is our protector. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to read more uh, other verses to find out exactly what else we can learn about this. Listen, let's just take the Bible for how it is. And let, let's kind of think about this, you know, mm -hmm. looking at this at face value and taking the Word of God, you know, as the authority. Mm -hmm. And it's explaining that there's water above and below and you've got this ferment, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're to believe there's water above us, then it really makes sense when you get into the account of the flood. Because yes. it clearly says that the windows of heaven opened and water came down. Mm -hmm. But it also explains that the fountains of the deep broke open and, and water, water came, came up. up. Yes. So again, we're seeing these parallels, you know, mm -hmm. with Genesis, yes. but also, you know, even further on with Noah, with Noah and the flood. Um, and again, even getting further on to, you know, Nimrod with the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. he was falling under the understanding of building a tower and seriously finding these openings. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's talked about in the book of Jasher, but it's also it, with the word of God, it explains that he was built, like they were building this tower. And again, they were t up to the, the heavens, to yes. the firmament. And again, if, it, if we're, you know, outer space and trillions of miles, <laughs> What concern is that? But again, there was something that happened where, you know, God confounds the language of these people and they separate and, you know, go to diverse areas, you mm. know, across the earth. But again, it says, you know, whatever man has, you know, believed, they will now achieve. Yes. Let's go down and confound their language. Yeah. Uh, which, which is a, a fantastic, amazing thing because for the longest time, you know, looking at the Tower of Babel, it did. It never made never sense. Made sense. It, it never, never made, made sense, sense no. until until we're getting into an enclosed flat Earth construction, and you're like, well, wait a now minute. Now it makes sense because now you know that up is up. There's right. up is the same in all corners of the Earth. Where, wherever you are, up for someone who is in North America is the same as up uh, for someone who is in South Africa, and it's the same as someone who is all the way in Australia. All people in, from all different walks of life, up is in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Whereas on a ball earth, on a ball, up for people who are um, in North America is down for other people who are on the other, on the other end of the, of the, of the sphere. Mm -hmm. So you have to think then, that you have to then reason and ask the question, well, okay, if we were on a ball, if we we're on a ball and we are simply at the edge of a Milky Way galaxy at the far corner of its rim. And we are trillions and trillions of light years away from even heaven. Then why would God even, why, just think about this. Why do you think God would come from billions or trillions and trillions of light years away and come to this earth and, uh, and, and, and confound the, the or uh, the language of the of the people in the time of, of Nimrod. Why would he do that? Why would it even be a concern? Why I mean, would it, why yeah. would it be a concern? No it never concern, never there yeah. clearly is a concern there. And in, in his loving kindness, he confounds their language. You know, he doesn't yeah. strike them with lightning. He confounds their language. They can't understand each other, so the yeah. construction stops. stops. But it was this construction and their pursuit for reaching the top of the firmament, yes. of reaching the heavens. And again, we're talking like like a controversy saying and billions of galaxies. I mean, can you imagine how silly it would be to look <laughs> down and go, look at sinful man trying if, if, to get to me. Exactly. And here, here they are, this human beings are like trillions of miles, well, I mean, not miles, <laughs> trillions of light years away. And then all of a sudden, let's say, let's just say God allowed it to happen and we were on a ball. Okay. They build the, they build the tower. Okay. Now what they, they get, let's say they eventually are to somehow make it to okay high high enough to the point where okay what's there it's just darkness and it's space so are they going to breathe in space if space is exactly what we've been described what we've been told that it's a vacuum well there's definitely not going to be anyone breathing in space so they are simply going and going to their own dim, uh, to their own destruction yeah, and there's, you I mean, think there's about just countless this. verses over and over because, again, the debate comes with the firmament. What is it? Is it solid? Yeah. Is it gaseous? Is it, you know, and again, there's verse after verse, and we're going to we're gonna we're gonna put take more it verses, exactly. yeah. more verses for you in the description. We're going to only go through a few, but there are multiple verses. So yes. you can start piecing it together and understand that there's a physicality to it. Yes. And, and it's, it's incredible. I mean, if we if we read in, in Job 37, 18, mm -hmm. yep. and invite everyone to, to check it out, and, uh, you know, we can read through it. But if you look at this with Job, you know, it says, Has thou with him spread out the sky, spread out the sky, mm -hmm. which is strong. I mean, that's strange. This, you know, stretching it out. Yeah. 
the sky and strong. So you think know? about this. Let's just press pause for a second. Think about this. Okay. He's stretching out this sky mm -hmm. and it's strong. Does that describe something that is a fluid? Or does it describe a uh, gas? Because a gas is essentially a fluid. Mm -hmm. And then just think about this. How can it be any type of a, of a, of a, of a gaseous fluid or any type of a fluid? Because in order for you to be able to divide a fluid mm -hmm. such as water, you need something solid, solid to yeah. be able to, to cause that divide. Yeah. But yeah, keep reading. Yeah, and, we're, and it's very interesting because yeah. it's a really great point. We're talking about liquid, so keeping the, the liquid yes. separated. So it, it's really intriguing because when we're getting into the science of this, but again, Job 37, 18, mm -hmm. has thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, mm -hmm. and as molten looking glass, so molten looking glass <laughs> is giving a transparency. This is obviously a see-through to some degree. And, and it's fantastically exciting. And this actually you can we can link this very verse also with the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verses 22. Yep, correct. Right? Where it says it is he, the Lord God Almighty, who sits at, above the circle of the earth and he and he sees the inhabitants of the earth are as grasshoppers. So he looks down in order for God to be able to see right through to be able to see us, sure, I know God is omnipresent, He is omnipotent, but for, for just with the description here, this describing a glass looking material. Um, so let's look at the word firmament, Strong's number 7549, it's the word rakia. We see that it's an expanse, that it is solid, it is beaten out when you see in the book of Job. It is a solid structure, uh, some say as of ice. Uh, a, support, a, port, a support base, we see that it's uh, holding up God's throne. Uh, so it is regarded by the Hebrews as solid, supporting the waters above in the verses that you see there in the Browns Driver Briggs Concordance. When you look at Job 37, 18, you see in multiple English translations a variety of ways of describing this thing, but all essentially saying the same thing. This is a hard structure, a, a mirror cast of bronze, uh, a bronze mirror, a cast metal mirror, molten mirror, molten looking glass in the King James. This is a hard structure up there. Uh, when we look at the sky in Amos chapter 9, verse 6, it talks about a vaulted dome. It's a different word used there, aguda, if, uh, aguda, if I'm pronouncing that right, a structure fitted together. But we see in Ezekiel that this structure, this firm structure, uh, there was a likeness of the throne on top of it. We see likewise in Isaiah 66, 1, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. There's something firm up there upon which his throne is sitting. We see in Genesis 1, 8, he called the firmament, the rakia, the beaten down metallic structure, heaven, shemaim. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. And he stretches out the heavens, the shemaim, as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. In other words, it's a shield, it's a protective layer that God created and it's basically transparent. Glass is transparent. Mm -hmm. So this, this firmament is transparent, right? And so that is what it is. And it's solid, of course. According, now we're just looking at it, we're taking it straight. How the Bible describes it, mm -hmm. this is exactly how we're going to take it. And ultimately, you have to ask the question, okay, if I am going to claim to be a... Bible believing Christian or a follower of Jesus Christ who believes the Bible is the divine inspired word of God, then you're going to have to find a way to explain how in the world you're still going to say you are on a ball which has no room for any firmament, it has no room for any, uh, for, for any logic that really meets the, the biblical foundation. So you have to ask that question. Is it the Bible? Or is it the, what, what the scientific community has given to you? Which one is the one that is deceptive? That's what you're going to have to find out. Yeah, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be the pursuit of, of the, the truth journey that we're on. Yes. And we can get into, you know, the problems. Because now when we're talking about a solid structure or a dome, mm -hmm. you know, over the earth, separating the waters from the waters. And controversy said it really well. He said, as a form of protection, I personally believe mm -hmm. that if it wasn't there, we'd all drown. We would, of course. I mean, there is water above us and a lot of it because I believe a little bit came yeah. down. Yeah. It was still a lot to flood the entire earth. But again, there is still water up there. Now, in the context of Isaiah's time, 
tent. This is what you might consider like a Bedouin tent structure. Uh, probably more like something like this, a yurt, which is found throughout multiple cultures in the ancient world. Or even today, we might look at as something like this, a dome tent. Regardless of which idea of a tent you look at, this is what they're saying, that the heavens are stretched out like a tent. So we have the word like or as being a metaphor, right? But tents are always stretched out over a flat surface. Interesting. So we continue. What's placed inside the tent? Genesis 1, beginning in verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good in the evening the morning were the third day how did the dry land appear Genesis just says the dry land appeared but when we go through the uh, Old Testament texts of the prophets we see a more definition as to how that happened Job actually predates Genesis Job was written before Genesis in Job 38 uh, he talks about the laying of foundations the earth was laid out with foundations <coughs> Uh, we see in 1 Samuel 2.8 that the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. The world's sitting on pillars. The foundations were discovered. We got pillars and foundations. It's all through the, uh, the uh, Old Testament. Psalm 102.25, of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth. Proverbs 8.27, when he established the heavens, I was there when he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep. The dry land appeared out of the face of the deep in Genesis. So we get more detail here from these various authors, and there are others. I just didn't have the ability to fit them all on one slide right here. But these are really good to get us started. When we see that the dry land appeared as a result of Yahuwah inscribing a circle on the face of the deep, look up the Hebrew word for inscribe. We see that the Hebrew word is chakak, or kalkak, however you pronounce it, I'm not sure. But basically it means to engrave or to carve something into something else, as if chiseling into like the, the stone for like the Ten Commandments. Please note, you cannot carve a ball into stone. However, you can inscribe a circle into stone, which is what the text says. The word circle is the word chug, which means circle. When we continue to look at this, we see that Isaiah is one of the last authors to write in this regard. A lot of people, when they're describing the earth, want to go to Isaiah 40:22, but you have to realize Isaiah is building upon all the people who had written before him, like Job and like David and like Solomon and like Moses. So when we get to Isaiah 40:22, which is a verse I have used myself to describe the earth, uh, it says, "It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth." Well, I took Hebrew 101 twice, so that should give you an indication of my aptitude for learning Hebrew. Uh, and some may say I don't even have that great a handle on English. Whatever the case may be, uh, language 101, words mean things. <laughs> and what's interesting about this, especially if you're a King James only type, um, Isaiah knew the difference between ball and a circle. In Isaiah 22:18, he talks about a ball. The Hebrew word used there is dur, ball. He chose a different word when he described the earth and staying consistent with the other authors who came before him in that regard. So Isaiah clearly knew the difference. The King James translators knew the difference. Now the question is, do we know the difference? Throughout the Bible, it still talks about the water above. It's consistent. It's yeah, it's it consistent. Is. The Bible is consistent with it, you know? Very consistent. You know, being written over, you know, with so many authors and over yes. so many years, and them having the consistency where it all blends Unite. together. There's, yes. no, there's no contradiction. Exactly. It all has that harmony. And again, if anyone has ever even studied, you know, the Bible, and you understand mm -hmm. that it's not just a book, and it's not just men that wrote it. It's people that never knew each other from different countries. Exactly. Through a long long period of time and yet all these people not knowing and all different walks yes. of life and when you read it fluidly it's all connected it and that's connects. the power of the holy ghost yes absolutely because you know, it this was is a... inspired it yeah. was inspired by the whole by the holy spirit yeah. absolutely Amen. and it's inspired and it's infallible so yeah. we can take it at face value and we can learn a lot by listening to god and not listening to the foolishness yeah. of man's theories yeah 
there's verses and verses and verses that talk about the wisest men of earth yes. are as fools to God. Yes. They are as fools. And again, over and over, we're starting to realize we were fooled. We yep. were being foolish. We were fooled by, fool, by, by the fools yeah. of, of, of society. Who, we were, yeah. And the thing is, we actually, we were fooled because we elevated these people to their platforms upon which they stand on. And the platforms which they stand upon, that is the platform that they use to indoctrinate us and to even get rid of any evidence of our living God. Everybody who stands in a position of power, you cannot trust them. Don't just take their words for it simply because they have received the green light and they received the thumbs up. In fact, they got double thumbs up and people are saying these people are the best for, for, for getting your sources of information. That is a danger. You know, it's very dangerous. And these same people who are standing in these high positions of power and they're giving us false doctrines and teaching us false things that further push God out of our lives, these are the very same people who the Bible refers to as these are the ones who profess themselves to be uh, wise. But by professing to be wise, they became fools. 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 You know? And again, we're talking about fools and let's not be like the fools. No. So let's listen and let's study. Let's listen the to the, yes. You know, and that's, that's what's important. And again, yeah. it's just, it is amazing to think we could be so deceived. And for some people watching right now, they're probably thinking it's the craziest thing. And trust us. Mm -hmm. We were there. <laughs> we were looking to, to reject this, to yeah. debate this, to destroy this method. But I'm telling you, over and over and over again, it gets worse and worse as the rabbit hole goes deeper yeah. in the lies that Satan has told and convinced the world yeah. through his agencies he set up. And it's a scary, scary thing to think about when you start understanding the level of deception that's going on in our world. It's you know? very dangerous, you know. Oh, it's and incredibly dangerous. We're up against someone. Think about this. Think about the severity of... Of the, of, the, of, the, of the situation here. We are up against a being who has been there from the very beginning. Mm. He, think about this, Lucifer, or who is now known as Satan himself. This very fallen angel, he deceived one third of heaven's angels. Think about who you're up against. You're up against someone who has been there long before the fall of men. You're dealing with the, with the serpent who deceived Adam and Eve. And they were perfect beings. So if he was able to deceive perfect holy angels of God and deceive one third of them, and he was able to deceive Adam and Eve, who also were perfect beings before God, and they dealt directly with God, Satan deceived them. Who are we up against? Here, think, put this into perspective. You... Compare yourself right now to how to someone who is perfect, mm -hmm. such as let's say just Adam and Eve. We are we are nowhere in any any close proximity to even be compared to them. We have degenerated by far greater of a degree. So how how hard would we, do you think it would be it would be for the devil to deceive the world today? The deception is all around us. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. The Bible does mention that, this, that the serpent was much more subtle than any other beast of the field that the Lord had made. Mm -hmm. That's how Satan moves. He is very subtle. You never see it coming. In fact, the devil will, will give you an image of himself. He'll say, this is how the devil looks like. And while you're looking in that direction, you're expecting him to come from that direction. He comes from your other shoulder and he's going to tap on you and say, hey, how are you doing? And you're going to be like, oh, hi, I'm doing great. You're going to start entertaining his, his company and you're going to befriend him. Not knowing that you've just welcomed the devil in your, in your life. That's how subtle he is. Everything he does is undetectable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless if you have Jesus on your side. Absolutely. And it's like, it's like a, the frog in the proverbial pod. And if anyone's ever heard the analogy where if you take a frog mm -hmm. and you throw him in boiling water, he'll just jump out. But if you actually put a frog in a pot and you slowly turn up the heat a frog will get to a point where it doesn't know it's boiling to death because it's slow oh, really? and gradual I actually, and again satan yeah. works in that way yes. in a gradual way he gets to a certain point with yeah. a little bit everyone gets comfortable then he pushes the level yes then he push you know and again he knows and understands that once we get accustomed and used to something on that's to the what, next level yeah. of the descent yes. of evil and of sin and we're seeing it with our society we're seeing it everywhere yes and we're bombarded by you know 
industries and agencies yes. that are pointing to the truth of our existence and our reality, and yet we can get into the absolute nonsense and how ridiculous some of these theories are and some of the <laughs> evidence that people will point to saying, no, you guys are morons look up there's space and again when we're talking the firmament and we're talking there is no leaving <laughs> no and again it's very very clear even back into genesis where he put the sun moon and stars yeah inside the, inside the, the firmament, firmament. yeah not outside in outer space you yes know, millions of miles away i mean they say the the sun is 93 million miles away you know it's just and, and yet when we see people actually putting the um sending out balloons uh, you've probably seen that video in fact just take a take a quick look at this video and I'm gonna show you how what you should be looking for. So as you can see, people are people are actually doing now experiments and again it's testable. They're looking at so when we observe that video, you can see a hot spot created by the sun, and that hot spot is concentrated right beneath the clouds, and above it is where the where the sun is. So then you have to ask the question, well. If the sun is 93 million miles away, then what is that hot spot that, we, that you just saw? Mm -hmm. What is that? You got to think about it. The sun is not 93 million miles away, right? The sun, I, the sun is exactly how the, everything is exactly how the Bible has described it. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon, they're all underneath the firmament, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah, one's the greater light, one's the lesser light. And again, you know, it's the absurdity of thinking that you're going to have a, a room and mm -hmm. you want to find a light for that room and you're going to find a light that's one million times bigger than the room itself. Yeah. It's absurdity. Exactly. I mean, these are lights to light up the day and the night. You don't need an object that is like, you know, millions of times bigger than the entire object itself. Yeah. I mean, we have lights even here in the studio. And again, they're not 10 trillion times bigger than our studio. Exactly. They're a lot smaller. You know? <laughs> and again, it's silly. It's silly when you start just thinking and just logically using your mind yes. of the absurdities that they give us and tell us these distances and these sizes. And it's like... They I, give us numbers again. They give us numbers that people can The human mind cannot be able exactly. to picture. They overwhelm you. And you you're know? just like, you know what? They're the smart guys. I'll leave it to them. They've done the math. They figured it out. I That's it. <laughs> I trust them. I trust them. That's <laughs> I, tr once you see I the trust math, them too, you know. <laughs> yeah, once you see that math, you're like, yeah, okay. I agree. If you can do that math, That's then you're it. smarter than me. That's it. They fool you, know? you with these crazy, crazy complex, you know, mathematical formulas. Oh yeah. You can clearly see that there is actually circular reasoning. In order for you to need one thing, you need this. But in order for you to need this, you need that. <laughs> We, many people don't realize that that's exactly what's actually what the scientific community is actually feeding to you. They're feeding to you circular reasoning, kind of like the whole gravity nonsense. You need the mass of the Earth to find out what gravity is, and by in order for you to find out what, what the what the mass of the Earth is, you need to know what the gravity is. You know, loop. It's a loop hole of a reasoning. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it's an endless cycle. I it's mean, an endless. It's, yeah. It's just, it's just round circles, round circles. They like they like their balls. You yeah. They like. It's just unbelievable. You know what I mean? And they're they're having a ball, laughing at us. Yeah. Because we're accepting this as fact. And I fell for this. I fell for this foolishness. So I'm going to just break it down for you, and I'll just explain. This is absurdity. It's nonsense. Yeah, understand? We're not you know? against. We're not against science. The scientific method, empirical evidence, observation, that experimentation. Is, yeah questioning all these things science is good it yep. is the hijacking of scientism yeah. and the belief that we are opposed to and yes. that's what we're exposing yes are these theories of some ideas they have but have never and, been proven and, they, and these theories are deemed to be factual exactly yeah exactly. they're all theories there's no debate we've already figured it out oh, that's really, it have you they changed look back and see how many times they've changed distances yeah. or years we were off by uh, two billion years. <laughs> oh yeah just a you know a little smidge yeah nothing major two billion they were off you know, constantly changing and changing and changing. And yes. they'll think that they'll have you believe that, you know, they're getting even closer and closer. But you'll yes. see exactly how absurd and how crazy these ideas are. Getting. When people are catching up to them, they, they have to come up with something that's even more absurd and much more bigger than what, what the rest of society will be able to picture. So then they'll escape and go in a different route. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all a game, mm -hmm. you know. And for those of you who actually think that, you know, um, I trust the experts. The experts care about me. The experts, they love me. The experts, the experts. I love the experts. If you're one of those, you have to, honestly, you're going to have to like wake up from that dream of yours that the experts care about you. Last time I checked, it's a numbers game. 
And all you are to the experts, all you are to your government is simply another number. They don't know, they don't care about your personal well-being. All they care about is the statistics. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. The earth is a closed system. The earth is a closed system. Have you heard about our glorious rakia? No? Perhaps you know it better under its English name, firmament. The reason I prefer to use Hebrew is because the English falls short of showing the full meaning of the word. In the original Hebrew, each letter represents a picture, and each picture has a functional meaning. And when the different pictures are put together, it forms a new word. Each letter in the Hebrew language is a picture from either agriculture or biology. Now back to the word rakia. Before diving into the pictographic meaning, let's look at the etymological dictionary definition of the word. Extended surface, expanse, firmament, sky. From the root word, reka, and that literally means something beaten out. From this, we know that the firmament is something that Yahweh beat out like a metal worker making a helmet out of a flat sheet of steel. In Bereshit 1.7, And Elohim made the Rakia, and divided the waters which were under the Rakia from the waters which were above the Rakia, and it was so. Already we can see a new picture forming in our understanding of this verse. Now when we take and combine it with a word picture, everything will come together in one complete picture. The word rakia consists of a resh that we have already learned means the character and authority of a person. In this case, it's the character and authority of Yahweh, the one who made the firmament. The next letter is a kuf, and it is the heart and meaning of the word. It represents the sun on the horizon or the back of a man's head. This carries the meaning and function of a secular action. It can also represent a dome or an arch, but it does not represent a sphere. And when we abstract it back out, it can mean Yahweh's Moedim. And in the case of this word picture, the Moedim can be seen in the form of the sun, moon, and stars. Yod means to work, and in this case, it represents the movement of the heavens. And the Ein represents an eye, and its function is to see or perceive. Yahweh placed the heavens out of our reach so man could not change or manipulate them. And in so doing so, he has created an everlasting, unchanging reminder that we can all see and follow his Moedim. So when we put it all together, we get a remarkable picture of Yahweh in his authority beating out a dome to separate the waters from the waters. Then he placed his Moedim in the dome in the form of the sun, moon, and stars for every person to see and understand so that we can follow Yahweh's appointed festivals. Now let's look at one last word. It is the biblical word for blue, techelet. Blue in scripture is the color attributed symbolically to Elohim. Techelet is the color that is used in the thread of a tzitzit. It is also the color of the sky and the ocean. It is the color of royalty. The word begins and ends with the letter tav. Tav is the picture of two cross sticks, and it represents a sign, a mark, or a covenant. The middle two letters is a kof and a lamed, and together they spell the word kol, and kol means everything or all. If you look at each letter individually, the kof is the palm of a hand, and it represents a hand opening to or to cover and protect. The lamed is a shepherd's staff, and it represents teaching and instruction. The word kol is the hand opening to instruction. So when we place it between the two tongs, we have the covenant surrounding everything, or the covenant surrounding the hand opening to instruction. Now if we abstract out the picture, we know that the word techelet represents blue, and when we look upon the blue in its tzitzit, we are to see the covenant between us and Yahweh. We also know that it represents the sky and the ocean. So if we look at this picture in the physical sense, we can see how it shows the waters that were separated above us in the sky and below us in the ocean, with everything in between being our domain. This word shows us that we cannot reach past the depths of the ocean or the firmament of the sky. And when we look upon these boundaries, we are to remember Yahweh's Torah. 
Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. The earth is a closed system. The earth is a closed system. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, you guys remember how I showed you the maps that were here on Earth before 1958, before the governments took them out. Now I'm going to show you the Encyclopedia Britannica's in the public libraries before 1958. Here is volume two out of the alphabet A. And we're going to flip to the Antarctica, which, and this is from 1958, as you can see. Now, we're going to flip to the Antarctica and see what the Encyclopedia Britannica from 1958 before the Antarctic Treaty says is there. Now you won't find this in the new encyclopedias because the governments banned them. But what I want you to notice right here is notice how it says the flights proved inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. Take a really, really close look at that. Now I'm gonna zoom it in for you. When they returned to New Zealand, these flights proved the inland areas to be featureless of the character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, let me show you with an image of what a flat earth map would look like. Now, this is what a latitude 80 degrees south would look like on a flat earth map. As you can see, the dome comes down closer to you over the wall, which would be about 13,000 feet. Now, if you go back out into the center of the earth or up the North Pole, and try to go up to the firmament with a little bit of calculation it's going to show that it's about 385,500 feet away it's really really simple folks now if you're not familiar with any of this at all at all and you're just now new to the, all this it, you could say well this guy is crazy he doesn't know what he's talking about but what, but what you got to ask yourself is why do all the maps before 1958 show a flat earth with the ice wall around it and a firmament, a dome. And why does the encyclopedia tell you that there's a dome there and it gives you the exact height at a certain latitude and longitude? Well, the reason is, is because in 1958, that's when all governments and all nations of the world signed the UN treaty to ban all civilians from going to the Antarctica. And NASA came in and erased everything just like they're erasing everything today. So again, ask yourself, if all this existed, before 1958, why doesn't it exist now? How come it all of a sudden was erased? Everyone, and thanks for watching. Out of your God history bless. books, out of your encyclopedias, out of your libraries. Wake up, people. Wake up. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. The earth is a closed system. The earth is a closed system.